I'm back with my solar generation for the month of October and what a fantastic month it was. Generation was massively up on last year, 42% higher. We had a lovely sunny month here in the northeast and that showed in the solar generation figures. Stay tuned to find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar. Welcome to my channel where I talk about all things electric vehicles, energy tariffs, solar panels and much more. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to find out more and also give this video a like if you find it useful. In this video I'll be discussing my solar stats for the month of October and it was an absolutely brilliant month in terms of solar generation when compared with last year. As a reminder of my system I have 10 panels on my west facing roof and 6 panels on my east facing roof. Given a total size of 6.32 kilowatts peak and I've combined that with a give energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery and give energy 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. Let's get into the figures and I think this graph sums the month up perfectly. So we've only had three months throughout 2024 where the generation has been better than 2023 and this month has absolutely smashed last year's figure. So 204 kilowatt hours generated last year and 291 generated this year. So an increase of 42% which is absolutely fantastic. Obviously slightly down on last month but not too far down when you look at the trend from last year. We've had lots of sunny days here in the northeast which has definitely helped that generation. And this chart shows the maximum generation days, the least generation days and the average days in the middle throughout October for this year and last year. So as you can see the maximum generation very comparable to last year. The average around about 3 kilowatt hours up on last year and the low very comparable again to last year. I'm currently taking advantage of Intelligent Octopus Go, which is a fantastic tariff offered by Octopus for electric vehicle drivers. This charge is just seven pence per kilowatt hour for charging my EV and home battery overnight, which makes running my house and car very, very cheap. I've also combined that with the outgoing export rate of 15 pence per kilowatt hour for everything I export back to the grid. And interestingly enough, as of the 1st of November, 2024, Octopus are now allowing the standard Octopus Go tariff to be compatible with the 15 pence per kilowatt hour outgoing tariff. So if you're on the standard Octopus Go tariff, make sure you get that change to get the 15 pence per kilowatt hour. If you're not on Octopus and you're interested in this tariff, if you use the link that's on screen now, you can sign up to Octopus and get £50 added to your account when you join and I also get £50 as well which helps the channel massively. And if we look at the generation throughout the month of October, so we have 291 kilowatt hours as mentioned earlier for the month. Generally generation really really good for most days. The best figure was 16.74 kilowatt hours and the worst was just 1.96 kilowatt hours. And if we look in further detail for the 5th of October which was the best day, as you can see the battery started to drop down a little bit before the sun came out. You can see that steep curve in yellow there. And the sun stayed out after that for most of the day. Topping the battery back up to 100% up until the sun went down which it then dropped to around about 90, just below 90%. Maximum generation for the day was 2.9 kilowatts. Now one thing I was doing previously was discharging my battery around about 9 o'clock until half 11 when the cheap rate kicked in. I've stopped doing that now because the days are getting darker. In that mode, you could not run the house on the Give Energy Eco mode without it drawing from the grid. Obviously, as the generation gets lower, we would have been drawing more from the grid, so I've switched that off now. I'm not doing the discharge, and hopefully if the battery drops enough on a night time to not have the state of charge issue. If we look at the worst day, this was on the first day of October, and very low generation, just 788 watts at its peak, and the battery mostly staying around about full until the end of the day when it dropped to around about 78, 79%. The October grid import is down on last month because I'm not discharging the battery on a night, so therefore I'm not having to charge it up as much overnight. So that's 103 kilowatt hours for the month. Import overall, excluding my AV, is around about two kilowatt hours to eight kilowatt hours on average. Our home consumption, very comparable to last month again. This seems to be about our standard figure as mentioned excluding the EV usage, so 161 kilowatt hours for the month, 56 of which came from the solar, 34 came from the grid, and 71 was from the battery power in the home. EV usage for October was 251 kilowatt hours, so I have intentionally tried to drive more economically this month, so you can see a slight drop from last month. I'm curious to see what efficiency we can get from my EV. 
but generally you can see that trend as we hit towards winter the efficiency of an EV goes down and you can see therefore the usage is starting to climb again. The grid export was 229.29 kilowatt hours for the month. If you'd watched my stats video last month you would have seen much more blue on there from the export on the battery before the cheap rate overnight. Now I've stopped doing that you can only see mostly yellow which is export from the solar panels apart from that one day on the 20th which I'm not entirely sure what happened there. And if we move on to look at the bills and the payback, the consumption for the month, as mentioned, 161, compared with 167 from last month. And that equated to 103 kilowatt hours from the grid that was imported, which equated to £7.82, which I think works out at about an average rate of just less than 8 pence per kilowatt hour. Generation 291, so slightly down on last month, around about 50 less, but still... Very, very good for this time of the year. Export 229, which equated to costs or earnings, should I say, of £34.39 for this month. And then if we look at the comparable cost without solar and just on the flexible tariff, that would have cost me £37.42. And with solar, it actually cost me minus £29.20. And there was also some saving sessions earnings there. I classed them as saving sessions earnings, but actually it was the free electricity sessions, which I gained £2.63 from. So the saving, when compared with the flexible tariff without solar, is £69.25 for the month. Add that to the cumulative savings, we are now on 2327 meaning a remaining payback of 8652 which if you follow this channel, you know that my install cost just less than 11000 so 10800 I think it was. So we're starting to bring that down now after less than two years of usage. I always like to measure the car usage on here as well. So 251 kilowatt hours for the month, a cost of just £19.03 on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. Equivalent cost for my old diesel car is £1.41 per litre to fill that, which would have cost me £148.05 for the month, meaning fuel savings versus my old car of £129.02. And if we add those savings onto the solar savings, we're £198.28 for the month, giving cumulative savings of £4,503 now. And if we look at the bills overall, my standard charge has gone up as of the 1st of October to 70 pence per day, which is absolutely ridiculous. And that equates to £21.70 across a month. The charge for the electricity to power my home battery and also charge my electric vehicle is £26.85. Take off the export, which I earned £34.39, and then add on the gas standard charge, which has also gone up and costs £9.20 for a 31-day month. And then as we've had the heating on more, now as the colder weather comes, we're up to £20.96 for gas charges. So in total, £44.32 was the total bill, which considering it's October, that's not too bad, I don't think. And it's also for powering my electric vehicle, charging my home battery, heating my hot water, heating the house. So not too bad, all things considered. So a fantastic month in terms of solar generation for October. Let's hope November's the same. Please give this video a like if you found it useful and also subscribe to my channel for more similar content. And also let me know how your solar panels and home battery system got on throughout October as well in the comments. I'm always very interested to hear how my system in the Northeast compares with yours. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.